This next one's kind of cool. Answer me this question. If I add 5 plus 7 or 7 plus 5, does it make a difference? What do you get in either case? Oh, yeah, that, that, that right there, that ability to switch addition, 5 plus 7 or 7 plus 5, do you know what that's called? Has everyone heard that before? Starts with a C. Close. You're emphasizing the wrong syllable, but the wrong syllable. But it's close. Yeah, it's, it's the commutative property. Like you commute down the freeway, you can travel, right? You can switch lanes when you travel. Same thing happens with addition. If you can switch those things, it doesn't make, make a difference. 5 plus 7 and 7 plus 5 doesn't matter. That's called the commutative property. So let me write that out for you. They both equal 12. It's called the commutative. Can you say commutative with me? Commutative. One more time. Commutative. Good. Commutative. <clears throat> okay. There's one more I get one, two. Yeah. I have to have you you think on. I and you think carefully though. Listen to what I'm I'm gonna say. If you add two plus three and then you add 6, is that different than adding 3 plus 6 and then adding 2? What I'm asking is this question. Do you remember that parentheses mean do this first? Do you remember that? It's a grouping, right? It says do this first and then do whatever's out here. Or do this first and then do this part. That's what the parentheses mean. So a little recall. Let me just remember this. Parentheses mean do this first. We will get much more into order of operations later, but that's the first one is parentheses. So here's the question that I, I posed to you in, in words just a second ago. If I add 2 plus 3 plus 6, or 2 plus 3 plus 6, and I group them differently, which means what if I put parentheses here and parentheses here? Do you think I'm going to get the same answer or a different answer? What do you think? Same. If I do this part first and then add 6, or do this part first and then add 2, I'm going to end with what no matter what? Yeah. This is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, or this is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11. Either way, you're going to get 11. This property right here is kind of a cool property of, of addition. It means I can group things differently, or I can associate numbers differently. It's called the associative property. Associative means grouping. It means you can associate things. Either way, you're going to get 11 here. It's called the associative property. Okay, last thing we do before we're going to get into subtraction, what if I gave you a whole long line of numbers to add? Can you add them besides doing it just two by two? For instance, if I give you like, uh, that. Do you have to add them two at a time, or is there a way we can add these all at once? What do you think? How? Okay, so if we follow the same rules that we did before for just two numbers, just make it bigger, like a longer vertical list, we can add these all at one time. Just make sure your place values are in order, and you know what? It helps to write neatly. That way you don't mess up those numbers, right? Because if it's all jumbled, then you start adding the wrong place value, and then things really blow up in your face. The paper lights on fire and goes, no, you're messing me up. That doesn't really happen. Only once have I ever seen that happen. <laughs> Do tell. What now? Yeah. Do tell. So if we do lines up vertically,
As long as we keep our place values intact, we're good to go. Can you do that for me? Let's work on that one. See what we get. That's a whole lot of ones we got. How many ones did you get when you when you did this problem? 22? 22? Okay, so 22, we have the 2 there. We are going to carry another 2 as our 10. Very good. Either way you say that's fine with me. So 22, carry that 2 up there. Now we're working on our 10s. How many 10s do we have? 14. Okay, so we're going to put a 4 here and a 1 up there. By the way, do you know about grouping 10s? when you can to add quickly. There's a way to do that. You try to make as many tens as you can, it comes a lot easier. So for instance, I see a five here and a five here, that's a 10 plus four, that would be give me 14. Uh, sometimes that works very well for doing math quickly. Just let you know. So we'll do a four here, one up there. How many hundreds do we have? Six. And then no more thousand, 6,642. We're done. How many people feel okay about addition right now? Good deal. We're gonna move on to subtraction. Real similar to addition. In fact, we're going to learn that addition and subtraction can be defined as one another, which means a lot of the property, a lot of the properties, not all of the properties, work for subtraction, and the methods work for subtraction like they did for addition. Well, these last two that they don't have. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's say that you have like nine apples, nine green apples, because they're the best. Have you ever had a green apple? Oh, I love this green apple. It's so nice. And you have a friend that comes along. You say, hey, I have an apple. And he's really hungry. So you can have some apples. And he goes, oh, OK. But instead of taking just one, he takes four. Greedy guy. I never liked him much anyway. He takes four of your apples. So you had nine. He took four. How many did you have left? Five. You can do the same way you can addition, right? That's what I'm talking about. The same methods of doing addition work for subtraction. Instead of adding on finger by finger, you can subtract finger by finger. Nine, take away four, gives us our five apples that we have left. Really, we should be memorizing single digit subtraction. So if I say nine minus three, you can tell me what that is. Or eight minus one, or eight minus seven, you can tell me what that is. We're not dealing with negatives yet, so I don't need you to tell me what is five minus eight. We're not there. Uh, but for whole numbers, that's what we're, we're talking about. You need to memorize a single digit subtraction or at least have a dot method or finger method for doing that. So we had our nine apples. Hungry guy took away four. We have five apples left. There are, just like in addition, some names for these numbers in subtraction. The first that we had to deal with, the first number here is nine. It's called the menu end. That's a weird, way, weird word. But can you say menu end? Yeah, it's the thing that you're subtracting from. This one's kind of a fun one to say. The thing you are subtracting, subtracting, is called the subtrahend. Isn't that fun? Say it, subtrahend. That's right. So what's the first one called? Menu end. Subtrahend. Normally, you really don't say those all that often, but they do have names. So the other thing. This one you should be able to, to figure out, though. This, this thing over here, instead of a sum for addition, we have a what for <laughs> subtraction. <coughs> what was that? Okay. It's a difference. That's exactly right. The difference between two numbers implies you are subtracting. Perfect. Now, I said that some of the properties for subtraction are the same as addition. What I mean by that is like single digits, you can use your fingers and stuff. The properties like the zero property we looked at and commutativity and associativity, those might not work. In fact, let's do a couple examples. 
If you take 7 minus 0, sure, you still get back 7. But if you take 0 minus 7, does that work for us right now? No. In fact, some of you who know about negatives already, that's a negative number. If you don't know about negatives, that doesn't make sense. If I have 0 of something and I take away 7, how can you do that? That doesn't make any sense to us right now. So that's off the table. That doesn't really work. That implies also commutativity might be a little off. If you take 5 minus 7 and 7 minus 5, do you get the same answer? 7 minus 5 it gives you 2. 5 minus 7 gives you, I don't know. I don't know yet. If we're negatives, it's going to be negative. So those things don't work. Also, associativity doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. You can't associate for subtraction. So the only property we really have for subtraction is this subtraction property of 0, like the addition property. For instance, if I take 34 minus 0, how much is 34 minus 0? Just gives it right back to us. That's the one that's like addition. Also, one more thing. What if you subtract a number from 14 minus 14, a number from itself? What is a number subtracted from itself? How much do you yeah, this is the property of 0 for subtraction. Or the subtractive property of 0. Now, just like what we had over here for large numbers in addition, we do have some ways to add, or sorry, to subtract large numbers for subtraction. And it looks real similar to addition. So let's look at subtracting large numbers. We'll talk a little bit. Hopefully we'll have time for this. I don't know if we'll have time today. But we'll talk about some geometry. You ever have done geometry before? Yeah. Yeah. Some basic ideas in geometry. Uh, and then we'll get on to some graphs. And that'll, that'll end this section for us. But first, let's talk about subtracting large numbers. For instance, I give you 958, and I subtract off of that 43. All right, you tell me what to do. Just like addition, exactly right. We're going to line these things up by place value like we did before. So we'll have our 958. Now, here's an interesting thing. Does it matter which number is on top for subtraction? Yes. yes. Absolutely it does. Yeah, it's different than addition. Addition was commutative. Remember, you could switch it. Subtraction, you can't. So you cannot change those things around. Otherwise, you come up with a big mess, right? You can't take 958 away from 43. Or the negative. It will be, yeah. We're going to figure out how to do that later with addition rules. But for right now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to set it up that way. So here we're going to have our 43. First one goes on top. Second one goes on the bottom. We are subtracting. Now we're just going to subtract digit by digit, place value by place value, like we did for addition. So, uh, how many ones are we going to be left with here? Five. Five. How many tenths? One. Hundreds? Nine. Good enough. And subtract from there, we get 915. <clears throat> are there cases where this doesn't work out exactly the way we want it to? For instance, what about nine, sorry, 94, 37? Uh, borrow, borrow, borrow. Great, there's that word, borrow. 